Hello, folks. Welcome into another episode of One Two Review. This is episode thirteen, the intern episode. We'll get more into that in a minute. Um, for those of you new to the podcast, it's a podcast where we where we rate and review movies. It's me, Luke, the strip club DJ, and my buddies Alex and Brandon. Um, it's extremely hot here. We rate movies on one and two. One if we don't like them. Two if we do. And uh, God damn, it is fucking hot in here. Let me take off this. While you're taking that off, let's kick the intro. Let's kick the intro. Bye bye. One, two. Ooh, Ooh yeah, it's a hot one. It's a hot one here in LA. It is a hot one on the West Coast. Heat wave, yep. baby. It's a cool 70 over nice here, work. guys. Well, I'm grateful that you're getting that because we had a, I don't know, good three weeks off. Yeah. Alex, we had a good three weeks off and we knew it was coming. It was in the cards. Last week of August here, smoking hot, at least for the West Coast. We're babies. Come on. Let's be realistic. It's not Las Vegas. It's not Phoenix weather, but it's hot for us. Silence. It's too hot. Ooh, it sure is hot. Uh, you know how I like to cool off, guys? I like to review movies. Do you guys uh, want to kick it to a movie and review one? That sounds Sure, refreshing. let's do it. Cool. All right, so uh, our first movie that we're going to review today is a movie called On My Way Bach. It was directed by Wes Clifton. It's a, I don't know necessarily how to classify it, an adventure, kind of a, a thriller, I guess, kind of a thriller. It's about a woman who is sent back in time to protect and uh, to kill the assassin that is trying to kill uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, that's the best way I guess I can sum up the film. Uh, it's action-packed, like I said. It's wonderful. Uh, uh, Julia Roberts is back. Haven't seen her in a very long time. I, I personally, she did some stuff last year, but I didn't see any of her work. Uh, so it was cool to see her. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this film? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this film. Julia Roberts looked great. I'd, I'd never seen anything like this from her before. It was, um, you know, I... I just think a lot of it could have been CGI. I'm not positive, but um, it was definitely impressive work. I didn't really understand this. I don't. Was Sebastian Bach assassinated? I didn't really do a lot of research into this, but I don't remember in his story somebody. No, actually no, trying no. To I don't think at all. I think Bach. so. The movie, like they explain later, that there's, there's, it's this guy is trying to stop all these great musicians. He's got this big plot to kill all the musicians. He's going back in time and, and kind of striking them out to, to change the course of reality. I totally didn't get a hundred percent his reasoning. I mean, they just made him pretty crazy. The guy was like a crazy guy in that last fight scene. He's like spouting out his kind of, uh, I don't know, his mantra, his goal or whatever. And it didn't make a lot of sense to me, but it was, Crazy it's like a proposed thing. I guess they're saying, and at the end, they make it seem like that this is a true story. They're trying to like make it believe that this did happen, like, uh, and he wasn't assassinated because of Julia Roberts. And that's the reality you know, Luke, is the one that this movie lives in, is what they're saying. Oh, of course. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, this movie was a lot of fun. I thought the time period, I guess it was accurate. I don't remember them having guns. Um, well, she big, she brought back uh, a bunch what, of guns and like gave yeah, them. Once the portal uh -huh. was open, they kind of people were going into her kind of you know cache. Yeah, yeah, because she leaves and taking the weapons that part. Out. She leaves hers open. She like spawns or whatever. I call it spawning because of like video games. She kind of like her portal whatever opens up in that castle, uh, and then she leaves it open. And then yeah, what, like that cook goes in there and he he takes a grenade and yeah. Um, Stuff gets out of hand pretty quick in, in that part. But anyway, there was a lot of humor in the film. Surprisingly, they kept it kind of lighthearted. It was action packed at the same time, though. I really enjoyed that mix. It was uh, definitely popcorn friendly. I went through a couple bags. Yeah. Um, again, I didn't really understand the references. Did Bach play bagpipes and all these strange instruments? I I mean they're just fudging the history well, they, on this. They can they like she really... she has that thing where she's told by her bosses to to make him put away those other instruments and to focus on one thing. Again, I missed that too, but they had a whole reason that all these musicians cuz there's also a part where they talk about Jimi Hendrix being an amazing piano player and he can also play the tuba, but he's supposed to just be a guitar guy. They're all supposed to be these icons. It was weird. I think it's part of a a 
a comic book series, like an old one that has a ton of comics in it. So I think it's an ongoing, it's these like music detective folk or like music assassin protectors. Yeah. In the comic book series, basically, you know, there are other time travelers as well that are altering history, specifically musical artists. So, um, it's kind of like this huge chain of events that we never know about because of them. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Um, w- wasn't totally on board with the soundtrack either. Either I thought it was a lot of hip hop, a lot of rap and trap music for the time period. I mean, I was just thrown off with a lot of things that just didn't fit in with the time period. I did like um, when Box sits down with epic dubstep producer excision and they and they throw together a track for the yeah. big uh, opera it's um, cool and the and then spoiler alert the bit the big bass speakers that they you know create from those giant megaphones actually throws off the assassin in that final uh, yeah. drop yeah i don't know you guys ready to review this thing absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So I, I, when I first saw the film, I was into it, but, but the more we're talking about it, the more I'm, I'm finding a lot of plot holes and inconsistencies and uh, I don't know. I, I didn't like it that much. I'm, I'm going to give it a one. Yeah. For me, this, you guys already know the way I was so confused by this. Um, you already know that I'm giving it a one and I really, I really had high hopes for this to be sort of more of a historical, historically accurate depiction of Bach, but, uh, it turned out it really wasn't so getting a one for me well i'll tell you what guys i'm gonna give this movie a two i think it's all about expectations you know you guys went into the film thinking you know one thing or i want this i want accuracy myself i just kind of didn't want anything i wanted to sit there enjoy my popcorn and be entertained uh for me this movie helped me do that so two Mm. points two points for two bags of popcorn um oh yeah this is exciting so I know we talked about this earlier, guys. Uh, the show's a lot of work, right? Patreon donors, it's a lot of money. I think we've spent about $700,000 on this show so far between equipment, Abakai, and, uh, well, now a lot of plane tickets. I guess I should stop teasing it and say we did finally go ahead and mm-hmm. hire an intern. Well, unpaid intern, Um but he is receiving college credit towards his mass communications degree. And um, his name is Mike. <clears throat> uh, Mike, are you over there? Or Mike? Hey, Mike, are you here? No. Hey, Mike. 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 I guess it should be said that Mike is very shy. I'm not sure where he is right now. Yeah. Is he? I'm not. Is he at I your place? I think he's right supposed now? to be showing up here. Uh, we we are sending Mike back and forth over uh, this great nation. Pretty much every day, sometimes a couple times a day. Most days, a couple times a day. Thanks again, Patreon donors. Um, you yeah, were thanks, able guys. to fund these trips. This was an incredible donation. We received you know, multiple donations of, of large, large amounts. So thank you very much. And uh, Mike, surely appreciate it. He's learning a lot. Yeah, and yeah, definitely keep donating. And you, if you don't feel like donating cash, you can donate flyer miles as well because a lot of it is spent flying mike back and forth um we split his time between new york and la and uh it's a lot of flying we're racking up those miles though so it's getting a lot cheaper the ubers are killing along. us but that's all right i mean not killing us we can afford it but, uh, ubers are killing everybody <clears throat> well ubers are definitely killing taxis maybe we should lift so anyway um i think well, we wanted to get him involved uh, in this first episode since it's a Monday. It's his first day here. We were going to at least try to incorporate him keeping score somehow. Yeah. Oh, wait, guys, guys. Hey, Mike, is that you? Yeah. Yeah, are you hungry? Okay, so this episode, the way we want to score is we're going to send Mike out on little missions to go get, um, well, I think Hell right yeah. now, Alex, are you hungry? Okay, so we're going to send Mike out to go get four sandwiches. Hey, Mike, are you hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to him briefly, and then we're going to send him out to go get uh, cool. four sandwiches to score awesome. four points All for right. this first well, movie. Well, uh, well, you do that. Should we kick it to a sponsor? Yeah. yeah Kicking absolutely. it to a sponsor. 
Pot's Lizard Collection. Download hundreds of pictures of sweet lizards from Pot's collection of rare and endangered species. Pot's download speeds are blazing fast, like a striking cobra. Watch out! Use code TSS to receive a free lizard mask today. Spelled five capital S's. Okay, guys, this week, another movie I'm absolutely excited about. I hope you guys saw it. I hope you guys are excited. This movie we saw is entitled Life as a Crab. Um, This is a documentary about a certain period in time where uh, there was a certain species of crab that excelled at one particular thing. Um, As it turns out, they can carry cameras really well. Um, So a lot of this film is, of course, from that footage, a lot of sweeping side shots, a lot of really low angles, Um, Some interesting storytelling for sure. Even though it is a documentary, there was a strong narrative that I felt uh, flowing through the film, um, much like the beach that the film takes place on. What did you guys think of the movie? Yeah, it's interesting. So I was I was a little confused. It, they were they were talking about that it was it was a time when these crabs were able to do this, but it seemed more that it was kind of a fad, like disc golf or pogs. That there was this fad where people were taking there. I mean, there was one species. It was this kind of hermit crab that had a bigger arm, so it could carry the camera, the males uh, specifically. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed more like a fad, like bell bottoms. That there was like this time period when these people were going to the beaches and putting these these cameras on crabs. Um, that. Sure, it was a fad. Um, however, that those particular cam crabs are now extinct, so the the fad killed. The yeah, yeah, species. yeah. And I, so I guess that's that's what I'm saying. Well, okay, I guess that's is they aren't ca- cam crabs. They were these poor crabs that were exploited to death, basically. But the film doesn't really take that approach to it. The the film kind of glorifies how how fun and how great uh, it was to have these crabs filming things. Um, but I feel that it's tragic that they all perished because of it. But Anyway, yeah, I wasn't uh, totally clear on the fact that this they were an instinct, extinct. Uh, it's really kind of uh, bumming me out because yeah, they barely mentioned it, but it was it was in there. There uh, are uh, similar type of crabs now. Actually, China in particular has uh, been using them recently to film. Those are lab things. crabs, but those um, are like built in a lab. Yeah, the, exactly. They don't appear in nature anymore. But a lot of people say due to the uh, radiation is what actually initially caused these crabs to begin with. So. Oh, that they were just mutant crabs. They weren't actually evolved uh, in know. nature. Exactly. So it's hard to tell. I think it's the same thing. Oh, but okay. Anyway. Uh, I think but, I'm okay yeah, with it. Uh, uh, Brandon was right. I guess we should address a little bit that there was uh, somewhat of a storyline about one particular crab that the, the, the documentary follows quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Miss Blue Crab. Who um, loses her baby crabs and she's trying to find her baby crabs on the island for, you know, parts of the movie. They dip in and dip out of the storyline. And it's kind of um, heart touching. The thing she has to do, she has to look under a towel for her baby crabs. She has to climb through some grass and she gets picked up. And by again, a I think cat. a lot of she gets stuck for a good hour at that fence. She's trying to get through a fence and she gets stuck because of the camera. Um, so I don't know. Again, it seems right. like these cameras a hundred percent led to the extinction of, of these crabs. I feel. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it was one thing to place the camera mm-hmm. in the crab's hand or the crab's claw, but I think they uh-huh. started gluing them in there because the crab uh-huh. would hold on to it until it was no longer, you know, they found out that it was no longer food and then they would drop the, the, the crab cam and, um, so yeah, they would use yeah, different yeah. rubber bands and string and stuff to keep the camera in that, yeah. that crab claw. Oof. Yeah. I didn't like that. And then at the end of the film, uh, Miss Blue Crab encounters, uh, in a climactic battle with a squid with only two tentacles, uh, defends her children in the, uh, vicious squid mm-hmm. attack. Yeah. Yeah. That was very, that was very, uh, I was on the edge of my seat for that. That was very exciting. Um, and utilitarian, as these crabs are too, we mentioned the Chinese use them to um, document back and forth style sports, a lot of tennis, um, different pool games. They would set up little crab zones around uh, the billiards table and uh, ping pong as well. So they, they, they actually served, um, they actually did a lot of heavy lifting that normal cameramen yeah. would be. Yeah, doing. yeah. So I- repetitive motion that cameramen you know their wrists blow out or their elbows blow out so they need uh the crabs just excel at it so they just put like food on the other side and they naturally just follow it. yeah so. yeah they just alternate which side the food's on depending on where the game the action is for the game um 
and Alex, I did catch that part where she was stuck with the camera, you know, and uh, I did watch that full uh, Blu-ray extra, the full hour and 15 minutes. And I thought it was going to be boring. I thought it was just going to be a black screen. But watching that crab tussle around was very... Um, it felt suffocating. Um, yeah. Yeah, the movie does do a lot of a lot of things right, definitely. Um, uh, the, the content alarms me and distresses me, but but the actual film is, is pretty great, I think. Eight hours later. Well, it sounds like we're sort of slipping into review territory. Are we ready? Have anything else you want to add here, Brandon? No, I am absolutely ready to review this film. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Brandon? Right now? <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. I'm going to give this movie a two. I learned a lot. I thought there was a lot of layers to it. I loved the uh, interesting t- twist and turns, and uh, I think I uh, kind of fell in love with Miss Blue Crab, so two for me yeah it's definitely it's, it's a two for me um and, and like i was kind of just leading to i i would urge anyone seeing this film to to realize that for me it feels like the film drops the ball on on the real tragedy of these crabs but the journey of miss blue crab specifically is so moving and and exhilarating that it's definitely worth the ride so yeah i give this movie a, a solid two a documentary does exactly that it documents so the fact that these crabs went extinct, the fact that nature was damaged by this uh, filming technique is not entirely on the filmmakers. It's not their fault 100%. Like you said, it was a lifestyle thing that really created the extinction of the species. So I don't have any ethical issues with watching this movie and enjoying it. It's a two from me. Great. Just in time, that's six points. I think I hear six someone points. at the door. Hey, Mike. Mike, is that you? I think Mike is here. What did you guys send him to get? Sandwiches. You didn't send him over no, here, did you? I'm going to get LA sandwiches. Uh, Mike's here. He's kind of shy, guys. I think he messed up. I think he showed up here. Well, just go ahead and talk to him. We'll just wait. Just go ahead and talk to him. Okay, Mike. What did you get? You got coffee? Okay. Well, try the coffee, Brandon. Make sure it's... Yeah, sweet. hold on. Because he knows what we like. I mean, we've talked about it like five times. Okay. Well, I guess he wanted sandwiches and you, you went to the wrong house. I didn't order it. So He wasn't supposed coffee. to get on a flight. We need those miles. Okay. Well, are you hungry now? Yeah. Well, no, don't make anything. It'll just make me hungry. It smells really good. Okay. Yeah, you should get some sandwiches on your way back to the guys in L.A. And, uh, Tell him it's got to be six. Six something. What do you guys yes. want? Probably for dinner at this I point. I want the four sandwiches still, and now Wes. Sodas? Okay. Yeah, we'll get some Well, sodas. Alex, it's going to be like eight hours, dude. I don't, I don't know. I, I think we I want chicken. chicken yeah. Don't you want chicken? Okay. Tell him to get some roasted chicken and fried chicken. Six. Six pieces, six pieces. of each. Okay, dude. Just tell him to get six meals. Okay, get six meals of uh, chicken for the guys back in L.A. And uh, okay, that's if good. If you have some money, get yourself something. Uh, and no hard feelings. No hard feelings, man. It's, it's hard. It's your first day. I know. It's a learning process. It's not his first day. You guys keep saying it's his first day. It's his no, first week. come on, Alex. It's not his first day anymore. And you keep asking if he's hungry. You guys are know, always asking he's if he's hungry. I don't I, know. He's why not he's hungry. hungry. You guys always ask never, him if he's I can hungry. never tell what yeah, he's thinking. Yeah, but you guys make it uncomfortable by asking if he's hungry. He's never hungry. I know. So he's just, shy. Yeah, he's so not going to speak up because he just says no. I think he is probably hungry, but he always says no. Well, Alex, well, why don't you just offer him food next time then? Instead of make asking. some spaghetti. Have it on the table All when right. he gets there. Enough of this. That's All good. right, but does he does he have the confirmation oh, code God, for that God. flight back? I'll text them. All right. Patreon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our Patreon listeners, man, this is our bad. But if you guys could pitch down six, seven hundred bucks or um, six, seven thousand points for those miles, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, all right. Well, let's kick another sponsor. We're going to need it. <laughs> God knows. Bro, 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 bro. Oh. 
The I and I wait is over. All ya banana leaf twisted with the smoke done light it up. Cheech Creech, the boys in the bong, all in all is I re for the new pretty gal. Dub plate to drop, dropping this one so hard, Medi make me ready for y'all grand men to cry wolf in with this musical release hitting the eye. Me night sounds be crippling me, right, with wickedness. Trying to blanket and pilly pillow to me and I sleep. Truth be pressure cooker is dropping. All ya herb smokers light up. The I and I herb smokers light faster. And correctly collect the Grunge Boyas album, Pressure Cooker. Get it now before you turn into a dead rotten crunk. Breda! Oh! I love that sponsor. I can't wait to patronize them more. Thank you. <laughs> or something. Big company. We appreciate that they're taking the time to sponsor a relatively small podcast. I love that sponsor. Alex? Oh, they're my fave. Yes, faves of all of us three. All right, well, back to business, boys. While we're waiting for the intern to do his thing, let's review another movie. I guess... Nine hours later. Okay, um, this week we reviewed... Soda Stops Here, a small Wisconsin town experiences a total soda blackout when the mayor decries that soda is banned in the town. And this movie documents that soda ban in this small Wisconsin town. Now, uh, did you boys have a chance to watch this one? Yeah, I did. Absolutely. Okay. My first impression was, wow. Like this concept has been attempted in some cities mm-hmm. to some degrees, New York, right? This, the small, small soda, small of fine, small sodas, right? I think in Santa Fe, New Mexico, they put mm-hmm. on a soda tax to make soda more expensive. Right. There was a the great soda and shrinkage this, in the West where they shrunk all the soda dams. So, right. Um, that might be unrelated. And, uh, I'm not sure. That's that does sound unrelated, but. This is the first time where this experiment, and I don't know, was it unconstitutional? This documentary explores those questions. So first well, again, impressions? My, was it a documentary is my question. I was kind of... It was definitely made, it was presented as a documentary, I, absolutely. They intentionally made it seem that way. They threw a lot of quasi-science That's what you. I was going to say. And at the end of it the day, like yeah, we're not sure what's real, what's unreal. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I was I was totally convinced that it was a documentary until about two thirds in, and the science sort of shifts, and you see you start seeing the townspeople feeling you know sluggish, lethargic, fatigued, losing fatigue, losing sleep, um, not getting good, terrifying sleep. dreams, and, and like night paralysis, sleep terror. And this was because they weren't drinking yeah. soda, right? Exactly. Yeah, this this movie was... They said so many times in the movie, like, for our documentary, in this documentary, we'd, like, you know, they were interviewing people. Uh, they said, this, like, this is real so many times. They kept, I guess my point being, they kept kind of pushing that it was was factual. And it couldn't have been. Some of the stuff they were saying, there's no way that was those were facts, right? Stuff well, that, like, babies should have soda? Day, so. Or, like, that it's good for a baby to have, like, a little bit of soda every day, like a sip of soda? That can't be real. There's no way. So, yeah, in this movie, uh, you do you do them hear them trying to bang that point home. This is a do- in this documentary, this documentary, this that we're documenting. Did you catch that on the camera? You know, asking, all, like, directly <laughs> looking at the camera. Did you catch that? Because this is what's happening in our town. Now, on this podcast, in this podcast, this podcast that is a document, I don't see there being any real differentiation. I don't see there being a problem with that kind of language on this podcast that we're creating. So I don't I didn't really see that uh, that fakeness that you're talking about in that. Sure. No. Right. So ethically, you have no problems in watching this movie. Oh, ethically. Yes, I do, because 
at the they roll credits and um all of the people are playing roles it's not oh, just okay. it's not just but, crew but and cameras. the credits of the film to be fair uh the film ends and it doesn't have credits for quite a bit of time and then like after a lot of black and after the song ends then those credits roll up it's yeah, they're also really tiny and only little in like corner. the left yeah, corner of the tiny screen, little corner you know? credits. So, I think I I wonder if you must be obligated to put credits on a film, uh, regardless, because they put them in there. But it seemed like they didn't want to. It seemed like they put them the furthest away they could. I think we might need to start adding credits to the end of our podcast, but we can discuss Probably. that later. Eh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So yeah, well, I mean, a little spoiler here. It turns out in the scientific research they did in the movie, it turns out that uh, humans should definitely have at least two to three ounces of caffeinated or uncaffeinated soda for children um, a day to sort of maintain that restful uh, lifestyle, that uh, energetic sensation yeah, they said that feeling throughout the day. To have normal dreams. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this. Oof. one thing I will say about this film, this film made me so thirsty. So thirsty. Uh, right, did your did your theater participate in their marketing gimmick where they weren't allowed to sell soda yep. during the film? Because mine yep. did, and it was so hot, and it was so annoying. I did. I think the marketing yeah, backfired. People smuggled in a bunch. There was a guy with, like, a big gulp, like a Circle K thing next to me, having a giant soda. I was, oof, I wanted it so bad. So, yeah, this movie definitely made you want want soda. Yeah. Alex, when you got up to go to the bathroom, I paid him five bucks to take a sip, actually. Everyone was everyone was sipping off of his big gold. I saw at least twelve people do it. Yeah. And I think they turned up the heat in my theater yep, too. Definitely. It was hot in there. Because cause normally you go to the theater expecting it to be air conditioned. I went to this one, it was hot. Whew, hot and dry. No good. But I did like the swag at the end of the movie. I know they do um little swag and and t-shirts at some of these premieres but this one that was great and it had the it was like almost like a syringe style shot glass and uh you know not enough just about and then just right at four ounces right, with and a, you could suck up soda one a day reminder on it the blinks an led light until you drink it yeah little keychain um i've been using it yeah, i feel great soda they say will do you well at least in this film. How do you feel about reviewing this film at this moment I'm in time? I'm ready to do it. Ready to uh, jump yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I didn't I didn't like that. I was trying to be tricked. Um, I do enjoy when I catch a tricker trying to trick me, so I did enjoy when I realized that it wasn't a documentary. But, uh, yeah, I didn't like this film. It felt manipulative and, and uh, uh, extremely biased. So I'm going to give it a one. Um, I, before this movie, I was not a soda drinker after this movie. I am still definitely not a soda drinker. I do enjoy a couple ounces of soda a day. It does help me through my day. I hated feeling manipulated by this movie. Um, and I do really enjoy Dr. Pepper. I give this a one. Okay. I'm going to dive in and say this is a one point for me as well. The marketing backfired. Um, I was hoping for um, a documentary. I guess it goes back to expectations. Again, I was talking about earlier. I think I expected a documentary this time, and I felt manipulated and kind of used. So one point for me. Oh, look who it is. Oh, look who it is. Big shy bike. Hey, don't walk away. Nope. Don't walk away. No, come back here. Did you get it? Chicken. What is that? All right. Well, just bring it to Alex. Hold on. I got to write this. Good work, man. You got the right chicken. That's the chicken. Is that the right chicken? You know what, Mike? Um, We need to review. We need to send in some more points. So before you dive into that chicken, can you run out and grab us... um, Three, I don't know. Three, we're going to want a little no, dessert, I mean, right, needs Alex? Anything. We can send him off for Brandon first. We can get dessert after we eat. Oh, okay. 
So okay, yeah. We got a lot to go through. Brandon, you want frozen yogurt? You want some LA Froyo? We do it best out here. Lactose intolerant. Let me go with a pie. Okay. You want three slices of pie, just dealer's choice, or you want him to pick out something in particular for you? Pick out three that he thinks I will enjoy. Um, I'll probably only take one. I might send two back with you. I don't, I'm not particularly I'm hungry. Pie guy. Okay. All right, Mike, did you hear that? Great. Are you hungry? Okay. All right, well, if you want to bring one along, then go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So he's on his way back over to New York, um, grabbing those pie bites for Brandon. I know uh, he's got a, quite the sweet tooth. Hey, no dairy on that pie. He thanks knows. for looking out, Luke. He knows what you yeah, like. Thanks. I appreciate it. That email that you sent out with all of our needs and uh, basic requirements was really helpful. I, I think I need to get some real work for him to do, though. This, like, sending him out getting food all the time is starting to feel weird, right? Um, He's taking points, isn't that? I mean, that's pretty critical for the show. I guess it is. Pretty- Brandon, if you think about it, if you think about it, think about the trouble we've gone through taking down points. Uh, abacuses, curses, um, just this is you. You really haven't dealt with this to my level, but this is a huge load off of my desk. This is a, a bunch of work off of my desk. All right, Mike. I'm Luke. Mike's on his way back. Oh, no. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying. (laughs) I was actually texting him and I was saying it out loud, but all right, Mike. Yeah. Oh, okay. I do the same thing. Just, you know, I go over it, proofread it after I sent it. It's kind of stupid, actually. Well, to review a movie, guys. No. All right. Kick a sponsor. Fourhats.com is proud to introduce our mix and match bingo promotion. Sign up for and stack multiple promo combos for added savings. For example, sign up for the bridal party fall time hats out promotion, as well as the big brim sunshaders half off deal, and save an additional 20% on any additional hats or valid promo combos. Match three or more promo combos for an additional 10% on your entire purchase. Don't forget to use promo code to review to receive a 5% off your original purchase. 4hats.com, finally making hats simple. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we all saw Cave of Meefs. This is a film directed by Gabriel Foster. It's a, a film about a, a cavern full of meefs. Meefs are these little kind of fairy elf type creatures. Their whole society runs on uh, an energy system, a kind of power plant they've created based on a AA battery. And the AA battery, it's one of those old ones in the 90s where you can kind of press it and see how much energy is in it. Anyway, thing is running out of juice. And so they send Limo out to find a new AA battery to save the kingdom of the Meefs. Uh, I very much enjoyed this film. Uh, there were some, definitely some interesting choices uh, the film is not animated. It sounds like an animated film, but it is not. Um, uh, when I again, I was going to say another film I just wish was animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, you know a lot of complicated costumes and makeup work in this film. Um, uh, any thoughts, Luke, on the Cave of Me? Oh man! So the '80s released a lot of really creepy movies um, that were kind of like this. Uh, one that comes to mind was Goonies, where they had uh, what's Chunk. his name? No, the big creepy guy. Sloth. Chunk. Sloth. Yeah. So this is like a whole movie. Granted, they are very sexy people with very good bodies, and the Meefs are very cute, but it's just um, too weird. It's like almost why wouldn't you just make it in CGI? Plus. It's voiced over anyway, because I guess the actors' voices didn't they quite were foreign. work. Or They're deep. foreign. They're all what Serbian. All the actors in it. It's a foreign, oh. it's a foreign See, that's film. That's what I thought. And then, yeah. Um... Seven hours later. So Serbia blew their like uh, national budget, a large portion of it, on designing the sets of this film because everything is you know supersized the meefs are so tiny to make the perspective work. They had to oversize build everything. So this is, you know, Serbia's last chance as far as their, their quote unquote Hollywood goes. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I am looking at this on Wikipedia 
And those sets are viewable from space. And the this, um, Serbian government actually turned them into one is a giant nightclub and one's a theme park. So they're actually trying to make money back off of the the failure that is this movie. I don't know. Did it did it see any? It looks like it it didn't do very good in box offices. I saw this. Well, no, on so it was DVD. released. The Serbian version was released with subtitles and stuff. And then an American company, I think Paramount. I don't know. I can't. I can look it up. Um, but w- one of the big companies bought it, redubbed it, and then dropped it. And the dubbing changes, I guess, a lot of the plot. Uh, the basic plot of him finding the battery is the same. They couldn't, you know, write a, write around that. But a lot of the relationships are different and stuff. So. Uh, it's yeah, it's a weird film in that it's kind of two films. There's an original version of it that exists, and then this is kind of a, a, a dubbed over version, a new film. Now, I will say, once I got past the fact that it was um, a very strange approach to, you know, a tied a tried and true method, a la Toy Story, make it 3D. I mean, that's not new mm-hmm. technology or anything. I will say the sets were magnificent. The music was hilarious. It was a bunch of chirping and uh, strange little like squirrel sounds used as beats. And the fact that they threw back to that old Duracell style Mm -hmm. self-testing battery. Like I totally forgot about those batteries. Mm -hmm. That battery is awesome. Yeah. This movie, again, like you said earlier, was like pretty creepy. Um, Like if I was a kid, two, two great ways to watch this movie. Watch this movie as a very little kid and let it leave a, a weird impression on you that kind of alters your reality forever, like uh, the dark crystal for me or something like that. Or watch this in college uh, mushrooms. on mushrooms. Like the first time you've ever done mushrooms, watch Cave of Meefs and you will love it. You and your friends will lose your minds. Uh, or, you know, check this out if you uh, are reviewing weird movies, you know. Are you talking about drugs? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So one two review does not condone the use of any legal oh, no, or illegal not drugs. Oh no, not us. I just meant if, no if you have created a podcast for yourself where you review uh, somewhat eclectic films and uh, indie films, then I'm saying hypothetically, if then one that were is a to time watch and a place movie, that you might perhaps... catch Cave of Meefs. Sure. Yeah, in a total. But maybe hypothetical avoid it. Time. Hypothetically speaking, you watch Cave of Meefs and you put on uh, a certain St- Stormbriner album, mm-hmm. things sync Absolutely, up. Absolutely, I'm you sure. Know. Uh, Oh, are you serious? This syncs up with Frig? Uh, not Frig. They're released before Frig, actually. It's pretty neat. I did it in oh, college. Oh, I thought you were joking. Oh, you mean Metal Blast? Yeah, Metal Blast, uh, I think part two, or parts one and two, you like you play part one on one CD player, part two on another CD player simultaneously while you watch uh, Meefs, and it's a pretty intense experience. Things, <clears throat> things sync up. You know what? I think I'm going to try to get Mike to That's get us those idea. CDs. So we can hey, try Hey, uh, you guys sound like you're ready. You want to review Cave of Meefs? You guys didn't have any thoughts on the AA battery? Oh, I loved it. You know, I, I mean... It was cool. It was great. Probably one of one my favorite, of my favorite batteries, too. You guys, do, do you remember I, how I useful that was? I have a feeling was? that it was more wasteful than anything. I have a feeling that it took valuable juice from your battery to tell you how much juice was in your battery. The battery did warm hot. up whenever you did that. In my line of work, I honestly go through 20 batteries a month, and it would be extremely helpful to know how much waste I'm simply throwing away. You're using batteries on wireless mics? Absolutely. See, there you go. Alex has a little industry wireless talk there, mic. a little shop talk. Yeah. Speaking of um, Okay. I think, I think now that we put the battery thing to rest, I think I am cool. ready to review this. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely give Cave of Meefs a solid two. I thought it was trippy and weird and, yeah, just exactly the kind of film that they don't make anymore. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. And, I, and the guy playing Limo was wonderful. I thought he was great. Uh, and the guy playing the, the elder was awesome, too. Anyway, uh, yeah. And the guy voicing, and the guy voicing yeah. both of them over, too, yeah. did actually yeah, a for, good job. Yeah, for... Um... Paul Blart. It was pretty surprising. Kevin, Kevin, whatever his oh, name is. Name? Kevin Blart. Kevin Blart. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to like this movie, but maybe it's some kind of like PTSD from the eighties. Uh, like you said, dark crystal scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Um, so did the never ending story and then uh, the one with David Labyrinth. Bowie. I don't know why I can't pull it. It's just too high. The navigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Labyrinth. 
<clears throat> Rab Ramp and Flight of the Navigator, all that scared the shit out of me. Even Muppets movies scared me. So this uh, being in a cave, Fraggle Rock, I don't know. It just brought back some bad feelings for me. Double A battery brought back some good feelings, but it still gets a one. Interesting. I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I um, I enjoy the film, but I enjoy my experience with the film possibly better than the film itself. Um, speaking for the original version and the newer version, uh, you know, it's the same thing, but without the cool music. So for me, I'm going to give the original one point. I'm also going to give the new version one point. So that, I guess I'm going to give it two points. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, that would be a sidecar review, Brandon. Uh, I don't know. We could check the rule books, but I think I could. Let me just say I give the movie two points. Right. Okay. You're giving Cave of Meefs and, two uh, points. Yes. Both versions. Not not Kulichia do Meef. Both versions. So two a points. sidecar. And a sidecar of two, and then a two from Brandon. Right. Mike! Okay, that's get a total out. of five. Okay. Okay. You're going out again. Uh, what do we want to? Where do we want to send him? Is he asleep? Mike, roust! Come on, get up, Mike. He got he back from so dropping off your pies, uh, and he's exhausted. He w- he's already back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, li- he, oh, he just left a note on my doorstep. I think he came last night. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, I, I heard some weird yeah. noises. Anyway, he's up. You up? Yeah, he's up. He's ready to go. So what do we what do we got? We got five points. Anything anyone? Five need? points. I desperately need to hear from one of our sponsors. Hit it. Every month, get a personalized box from your fictional boyfriend. Rub it into a roommate's face. Keep lying to your parents. Or make a current lover jealous. Enjoy the benefits of a boyfriend box today. Use promo code X and receive an extra sock, three empty Gatorade bottles, and two protein bar wrappers to leave around the house. Boyfriendbox.com Greg always does this. Look at my foot. How could it possibly be my sock? Look, I'll put it on. That's... It looks ridiculous on my foot. Wow, she must have a boyfriend. Maybe Greg is real. You think I'm eating Turbo Jack protein bars? Are you crazy? Gatorade? I don't even know what's in this. Three bottles a day? It's Greg's. My boyfriend. You know he loves Arctic Blast. That's the only flavor he drinks. Drinking it since he was a freshman. On the soccer team. He's Greg, he's my boyfriend. All right, all right. Honey, or, honey, how's Greg doing? Are you and him still seeing each other? Oh, he's such a jerk. Oh. He leaves Gatorade bottles everywhere. My roommate knows she sees them. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. You should talk to him about that. But he's so sweet most of the time, though. He's sweet. He's just busy with soccer team. Boyfriendbox.com <clears throat> okay, um, let's review another movie. I'm ready. This week, okay, ready, Brandon's ready. ready. Alex, you ready? Okay, tops the movie. Uh, baseball cards, baseball cards come to life in this sports memorabilia movie, where the tops baseball cards have to rescue a rare Babe Ruth card inside of a memorabilia shop. Um, did you guys have a chance to see this, Alex? Brandon. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw this one. Checking my calendar. It was a, it was a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, I definitely saw this movie. All right, tops the movie. Any first impressions you guys want to throw at me? Uh, I used to have baseball cards. I used to have tops baseball cards even. So it was interesting to see uh, baseball cards again because honestly, I hadn't seen them in quite a while. Uh, you know, there was a time when the Sandlot and Rookie of the Year, Angels in the Outfield, when these baseball movies were. Uh, coming out and i was a kid and they felt like it was the right time for them and it doesn't feel like baseball is is relevant anymore and i don't know if that's because i've grown away from baseball or if baseball itself is is changing in some way uh so that's what this film made me think about 
Yeah. I've been on the internet, on social media, begging Hollywood for another baseball movie. And then this comes out and it's a total loser. The major problem with this movie is they hired baseball players to voice over the baseball, their actual baseball cards. And baseball players are, guess sure. what? Not good at They're acting. Terrible. They're good at baseball. Uh, I would say the other problem with this baseball movie is that there is, am I right? Uh, no baseball at all in this whole movie. No baseball played. Uh, it's it's a bunch no. of baseball. There's a lot of tons, baseball references. Non-stop. It's baseball players talking about baseball statistics. Statistics. All but never once do the cards even try to play a game of baseball or anything like that. Um so I'd say two major flaws. Get real actors for a film, and if it's a baseball movie, put in some baseball. Yeah, it was an interesting choice that they decided to use the actual any kind of archival or stock footage they could pull of these baseball players actually talking. They would then create an alphabet uh, from those words uh, digitally and have the characters actually use these characters' voices. So on one hand, it was pretty unique and interesting to hear what Babe Ruth might have sounded like it might have been a little bit too terrifying for me, though. It it uh, was kind of frightening. Yeah, it was pieced together in a very robotic and monstrous way. And um, <clears throat> and it, a lot of it didn't make any sense. You know, like at the end of the movie, the very end of the movie, that's the most moving part. And Babe Ruth asks Wade Boggs, um, how did you know? And he goes, well... We just played the game to the best of our ability, swung the bat right, and got through the 11th inning. And that's how we came out ahead. And it didn't make any sense because it was just cut from yeah. old footage. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not my kind of film. Seven hours later. And did you guys get the pack of cards that came along with the DVD yeah, or the Blu-ray? Yeah, it was, a neat, that it was, was unique that they added the yeah. uh, gum in there, too. Yeah, that was actually vintage gum. Unchewable just turns into a I powder. Um, I thought it was weird that they had a baseball cards of the, of baseball, the baseball card. Cards. Yeah, yeah. Baseball cards in the so when you look at it, you're just looking at a, a baseball card of a baseball. It's funny. I like card. the idea of it, but I mean, it's that same idea that you know, if cars, well, cars did catch on the the, the movie Cars, you know, and then people were into having little cars and stuff. Oh, so it's I think huge. they were hoping to revive. Uh, you know, baseball cards, but but I don't think so. You know, I don't think it, it worked. Again, I you guys didn't really answer. Do you think baseball has changed? Or do you think I have changed? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I think we've all changed. I think Tops the movie needs to change. I'm ready to oh, do it if you guys yeah. are. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Tops the movie, but I, I got to give you a one. It just. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just wasn't my cup of tea. I, I was, you know, when I, like I said, when I list those baseball movies, all of them have moments in it that I recall as a kid really enjoying, and they were all moments of baseball being played. None of it was about people talking about baseball. So, uh, again, that's my main complaint and why the film is getting a one from me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> tops the movie, flops the movie. One. Um... Yeah, I don't know, guys. I'm going to go ahead and give this movie at one point as well. It uh, just didn't do it for me. Okay. Well, that's three points. Three points. Uh, we should have. I don't think we should. Mike. I think Brandon should. No, yeah. He's, he's been here, actually. He's been getting a little sleep in the corner. He's he's actually looking a little weak. Let me wake him up. Hey, Mike. Mike, how you doing, bud? Ask him if he's had any food. I'm wondering. I'm worried about his nutrition. If he's getting any food, and because you, when he did you pick up? No, he, I can't. Can you speak up, Mike? He's just so he's, he's very so shy. timid. It's so annoying. Okay, Mike. Listen, uh, we just scored this one with three points. Okay, can you write that down? Yeah. Does he have that pad that I gave him? Yeah, he has that pad, but he's just so weak. It's like he can barely lift the pin. All right. Well, I'm seeing six boxes, six meals still left over I mean, here. Uh, he didn't even bring a chicken meal with him. Yeah, let me see that paper, Mike. No, three points. Three okay. Points, this is really unprofessional for a podcast. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. You know, Mike's brand new. Sorry. Alex is gonna Alex is gonna hate me for making excuses for him, but Mike is brand new, and we're really working with him. He's unpaid. It's all just for college credit, and uh, he's been going back and forth New York to L.A. We call him, we nicknamed him Red Eye Mike because he's 
always on well, the red honestly, eye. Honestly, he and might forth not get the college credit. Yeah. We, can, still, I, can I send him over to you? I don't have anything yeah, else. Yeah, just send him over. Tell him, uh, just have him write down three points and send him back home. Yep. Yeah, totally. He can get some sleep on the plane. Just get him, get him in there. You know. Practice riding that three. Just put it on. Oh, he's going to down to him. I'm going to need you to go back to L.A. Get some sleep on the plane if you can. I know you're a little terrified of it. You really should have put that on your resume. But Tell him this is getting him a credit. We'll make sure. It's in the bag. Credit, Just, okay? you know. Yeah. Go back over to my buddies in L.A. We'll, we'll figure this out. Then. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So. All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll be waiting for the, yeah. for the little well, guy. I mean, I, Let's do a sponsor yeah. break. Yes, let's do a sponsor break and pick up the mood here. Sponsorship segment. Sponsored by Sponsoring Incorporated. We sponsor anything that needs to be sponsored. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we saw a film called Ham Bone, directed by Tex Stanford. This is a, a new film, just came out in 2017. It is about a detective named uh, Michael Ham Bone who uses taste to solve crimes. Do um, you guys have any first uh, gut reactions to this film when you when you stopped watching it? Yeah, well, right off the bat, Alex, it's not ham bone. It's ham bone. That's my first reaction. But uh, my second reaction is yuck. I can't stand watching this guy going around licking around the city for clues. It's yeah. nasty. Yeah, yeah. This guy mouths everything. He mouths pens and pieces of paper and books and, and uh, train tickets and buttons on elevators and ugh. Buttons on people's jackets as they're wearing them asleep yep. on the subway. And then the girl then his taste buds are incredible. It's like a symphony on his And tongue, then to you know. watch him uh, make out with uh, the lady in that scene was was gross. After you'd seen his tongue on all those things, it was hard to not imagine his tongue in her mouth and where that tongue had been. Because I, I see that's true though. But he does get a sure lot of does. information yep. out of that lady. He sure does. Now you guys just saw the film at a normal theater. I was I don't know if they have those in L yet, L A yet, but I saw it on the D X seven seat. Did you no. guys get one of those seats? No, was that? Ooh. That is very cool. Yeah, sounding. super expensive. They were all nearing seventy dollars a tickets, but these D seven seats actually, you know, uh, not only moved. That's almost standard now in a lot of movie theaters, but they also sprayed a little bit of water, also projected some scents in the air, and also produced a fog like uh, atmosphere for you to enjoy your film in. And from what I'm hearing, you guys didn't enjoy the film. For me, it was a totally different film. I mean, I could smell everything that he was tasting. I could really immerse myself in the uh, environment. So, you know, I really enjoyed it. Well, and hey, that's not true. It's not that I didn't enjoy the film. I was grossed out by it, but I honestly very much enjoyed how grossed out it made me and more so watching the audience around me uh, because their tolerance was definitely much lower uh, than mine in terms of people sucking on things they shouldn't. Uh, People were squeaming. Definitely. Definitely. Squeaming. They were squeaming, which is a combination of squirming and screaming. Squeamish. I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of that in the theaters. And that sort of group interaction helped me get through this movie. I couldn't watch this alone. And I mean, when I see somebody licking you know a pole inside a subway that's horrible and i imagine what that tastes like but if i see everyone around me freaking out it's sort of relaxing so um that was a lot easier to watch it and brandon don't be jumping the gun on this review i'm not necessarily giving it a low rating i I did jump the gun i just do really feel like total immersion might be the key to this film well i would argue Um, that a film Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but like a film shouldn't need total immersion to make it work. It should work on its bare bones. Um, yeah, I'm. I agree with Alex totally that the film itself should be the total immersion, just the audio and video. Ugh, but um, from the DX, from what the DX7 sounds like, sounds phenomenal experience. A little high end for me. Um, hopefully, they bring the price down once it uh, breaks in LA. But um, DX7 sounds great. Um, as far as the symphony of flavors that he's experiencing, the symphony of sound as well. You know, I'm a big soundtrack guy. That symphonic backing in this movie was insane, and it was really something to take. And I actually bought the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. 
and I'm enjoying yep. it daily. I hear it, I hear it constantly. So, do you taste things when you listen to it? Sure, yeah. I taste um, nasty cigarette smoking women kisses. I taste uh, old sandwiches out of the trash. Eight hours later. I don't actually taste that. Uh, well, should we review <laughs> this flick? Right, yes. We'll start it out. Not, not to jump the gun, but I'm going to go ahead and give this two points. I really felt immersed. I think this is a new trend. It's made a kind of banal movie into something really immersive, almost a VR like experience for me. Two points. Luke, what do you think? Um, yeah, a lot of strange tasting and disgusting gross out scenes, but at the end of the day, sorry, the dog's scratching here, but at the end of the day, Hambone was a solid detective and intrigue flick that actually had me wondering what was going to happen to the killer if he got away or not uh, spoiler alert, there's a killer in the movie that uh, hambone's tracking down but um solid detective movie at the end of the day even though with all the gross stuff so i give it a two cool actually. yeah and I've, I've been pretty back and forth on this one since i saw it and yeah i i, I do see what you're saying brandon it is it is neat like if this immersion is a new kind of movement that's going to happen that's great and i'm glad that there is this kind of flick to kind of spearhead that because you need those that said, a lot of the pioneer things in any field aren't always the best. And just because they're a pioneer, I don't think you should get the credit uh, or you deserve all the credit. I think it should stand on its own. And I don't think this film did. And you're right, Luke, it was a good detective film, but uh, maybe I just wasn't in the mood. But uh, I give Hambone a one. All right. All right. That's five. Um, Mike made it over there yet? I think, I think Mike is getting his way back here yeah i sent my buddy to go pick him up he was so tired he literally had to pick him up and put him in the car um hey mike mike you want a coffee all right man he is totally tuckered out i think i'll get the the what is it five i think i'll go get the five coffees for us yeah or take a look at his notebook so how many points that. are we at um well on a lot of these pages, it's not even real numbers. Does Mike know how to write? Is Mike illiterate? Where did you find Mike? Okay. Um, just on Craigslist. Huh. He's a CSU student. He brought his transcript. He brought his transcripts over. So I don't know. I, maybe they've got low admission standards over at CSU for their mass communication program. I don't know. I'm on hold with the uh, intern agency, I'm trying to see if we can get Mike replaced. Uh, I hate hold music. Generally, I hate hold music. Yeah, this is annoying. I like this hold music. No, I like this. No, but this is an app. I'm not even on the phone. I've, just, I've opened the intern trading app. Hold again with you. Interns waiting, they are too. Many people in the choices. I don't know. What do you think? Can keep them around? This is kind of a nice. Uh, yeah. You know what, Brent? I went through great lengths. You just kill. Hang up. Hang up. I went to great lengths to uh, get Mike from CSU, and um, we're going to keep him around. I see big things in his future. I see him really helping us a, a lot in the future. Um, and I put a lot of thought into picking Mike in particular. So how long is it going to take to he's got... read and write and like do stuff? I don't think he's. I don't think he's illiterate. Honestly, I think it's just the the <laughs> just the amount of flights he's taking. It's how tired he is. I mean, we're putting him through a lot, you know. And um, I think we. I think really what he needs. He needs a project with some meat on the bones to really bite into. Well, let's figure something out. We'll work on it. Something that something that really give him a chance to shine. If any uh, users have any suggestions, shoot, shoot us some suggestions. We'll uh, we'll run it up the chain here, and we'll see if we can get it approved. All right. 
And if not, we can always use that intern app. <clears throat> wow, that was a hell of an episode. I am exhausted. Join us next week on episode 14 of your favorite podcast, One to Review. We're going to be reviewing movies Boober, Stalker Man, Hot Tits, Big Bear 2, Lil Cub, Algebra, and another from the Doe series. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for reviewing us on iTunes with those fives. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week with another episode of One Two Review. Thank you for listening to One Two Review. This week, Alex was played by Jeremy Turner. Luke was played by Juan Jackson. And Brandon was played by Angela Robinson. Special thanks to you.